Yes, yeah, so welcome to Vasily's Garden, folks. Today we're talking citrus because it's an important subject because we're going right into the heart of citrus season. But before we go there, something a bit closer to my heart are bloody weeds. What are the, you blink, literally blink, and they just appear. It's probably been here about a month and I haven't even seen it. I'm going to try and pull this thing out. It's as prickly as all. Ah. Uh, anyway, just get that out of the way. I'm standing in front or next to our orange tree and it's blooming profusely. It is prolifically, I should say, not profusely. Well, that's the same word, isn't it? You can cut that part out, please. <laughs> okay, it's pr blooming profusely. And we, uh, our distributors got to me today and said, where's the CGWS? And they put an order in. It's a big order that's going out to South Australia. So for all you viewers out there in South Australia, the stock's been shipped out. Uh, we've got a few hundred sent out to them and there's another few hundred going out next week uh, to get in time. And the topic that I'm talking about is citrus gall wasp. Now, before we go into the topic of that, just quickly, any plant in flower, whether it's a citrus tree, fruit tree, or even a vegetable, when it's got beautiful flowers on it, do not spray them, no matter what sort of products you use. You can, there are some natural uh, remedies you can use that won't affect the flowers, but when it comes to insecticides and fungicides, steer right away from the plant with the sprays. Otherwise, you will knock the flowers out, they won't set fruit, and then the whole purpose of growing it will go to waste because you're here to harvest and enjoy the wonderful, bountiful fruit that come off these beautiful plants. Now. I feel like I'm in jail here. Can I come around the other side there for a second? This is really awkward. Just walked past the lemon tree and it's doing really well. I'm happy with all the new growth. Now we've had, and a few emails came through and comments came on our social pages. How do we uh, pull up with the bad weather change that we've had? Well, the high winds, we're accustomed to them now because Lethbridge is always blowy, uh, higher than usual. So if you've got 40, 50 K winds down in Metro Melbourne, uh, we'll probably hit about 60, 70 on average. Now the rainfall is lower, so we did have a lot of rain, but by comparison to other parts of Victoria, down the southeast, especially who uh, got flood warnings now to get out, uh, we hit about two mil, two and a half mil, that's about it, where I, I heard it was 100 mil, 110 mil, you know, 10 centimetres of flash flooding, that's extreme. So we're okay, our grounds are nice and moist, so the garden bed's doing really well, everything's fine there. And now as we go into the heart of citrus, and obviously spring summer vegetables, all the pests come out. Keep in mind there are predators for many of the uh, pests that appear on your plants. I did one the other day on the brassicas, the aphids, on the uh, cabbage aphid, the sort of silvery grey ones. Uh, there are uh, predators, is the word that I'm looking for, like ladybirds that will go along and feast on those insects. Now, if you haven't got predators in the vicinity uh, and you're using insecticides, uh, chemical based, well that'll be the reason why. If you're using natural remedies, more than likely you'll find the predators will turn up and do a job in maintaining it for you. But in the case of a citrus tree, and in this case here we're talking about citrus gall wasp, if you haven't seen it, let me just remind you what it looks like. It's not the insect that you've got to look for, it's the lump, the swelling on the branch. And I'm looking for a branch here. Admittedly, we haven't got any citrus gall wasp on our trees here because we're quite cold for them. They don't like this cold weather, although they are adapting to it slowly, I dare say. And as I speak, I probably spot a gall on my branch, but I haven't, thankfully. I'm looking at my lime tree flowering beautifully. But if I was to just cast a bit of shadow over this branch so you can see it. Now, if you had citrus gall, what would happen is that it'd be a swell on the branch, on any particular part of the branch, any part of the branch in fact, it would swell out like a lump, like a, like a bump. Now what's inside are the babies, the, the larvae, the citrus wasp, gall wasp larvae, who lays it or she lays them just underneath the surface of the, the skin. Uh, they, they burrow inside and they feast off the sap flow through the tree. The sap sucking that they do does restrict the sap flow through to the rest of the tree and it does cause some stress to the tree, meaning the tree can drop some leaves, maybe flower profusely for one season and then all of a sudden stop flowering. But if you allow them to develop to the extent where it's gnarly all along the branch, just making sure I haven't got any here, you've got lumps like citrus gallwops and they can appear side by side. So you can have a lump at one spot, then right next to it another one. And in the case of the lemon tree, which is the most vulnerable plant of all the citrus, 
the older branches can start producing some big major spines or big big pricks on them, uh, needles. Call them what you like, but they're very sharp and dangerous and the tree can look really gnarly and obviously defoliated and struggling. And when it loses its leaves, it doesn't have the energy, it doesn't have the storage, it doesn't have the sap flow going through it as well. So potato pillars, and I know I've said, I sound like a broken record here for those who know about all this, but for those who don't, potato pillars, well, Many have tried, very few have succeeded. And what I mean by a potato pillar is a peeler, is peeling the bark off the one side and exposing the nest inside. Getting airflow inside will dehydrate the insect, cause it to die off. But you've got to remember, when you're looking at it, and I wish I had one here to demonstrate, and thankfully I don't, uh, the lump itself will appear on the one side of the branch, predominantly on the one side of the branch. So let's take my finger as a branch. The swelling will occur on this side for argument's sake, that's where the nest is, not on that side. So when you go peeling them, you've got to look where the swelling is. And it's more so on one side than the other. If you peel the opposite end, you're basically peeling an area where there isn't any nesting going on. Maybe some swelling, but not as much as what it is on this side. But where the lump is, as soon as you peel, you'll find little holes, burrows. And that's where there are, they're inside there. Now, you can sit there with a the peeler till the cows come home to try and control it that will work to some extent, you can prune them all off. Now, if you prune them all off, you're going to cause the tree to go back into flowering or, or, or growing again. So by pruning the tree hard in one go, you'll react, cause the tree to react into a growth spurt, which means lots of upright growth and very few, if any, flowers appearing on it because they need at least nine months to produce uh, some flowers on their tips. So on the new growth, you're not going to get them. It's the following uh, cycle of seasons where you'll get your flowers on them. So pruning is okay, but you also attract the insect back to the tree. And what I mean by that is, as soon as you get the new growth coming on, the soft, gentle, succulent little sapling like that is a beautiful, beautiful host for the gall wasp uh, to lay its eggs in there and, and produce. So as these grow, they're still tender and soft, lots of sap flow through them, lots of sugars, and that's what they love. So pruning is good uh, if you need to, uh, and it's always good to remove some of the uh, obvious ones, but the old gnarly ones at the base, if you see them down low on the tree and they've got holes in them, like the galls there, there's a few little holes on them, they've been emptied out, meaning they've matured and they've moved on. So there's no need to cut them off. It's the new growth that you've got to look at, the young growth, I should say. And if you do prune them off, the most important thing you've got to do is spray it. Spray the tree and the only product that really works is CGWS. CGWS is Citrus Guard White Spray. Uh, it's an acronym for either that or Citrus Gall Wasp Spray, whichever way you like it. Uh, and South Australia, I don't know, and I know New South Wales is about to go crazy with it as well, but South Australia, uh, they've been screaming at us in the last day or two, so we've shipped out a heap. For you guys who are watching from over there, it'll be in your local stores very shortly, if not already. Uh, and as far as anybody else in Victoria and the other states, if you have sighted citrus gall wasp on your trees, act now, because in the next two to three weeks, that's when they mature and they'll come out and start infesting your tree again. So you don't want to have that re-infestation. Biggest problem we have, and I mentioned it right at the beginning, flowers. While the tree's in flower, you can't spray the tree all over. If you can manage your tree, and I can't in this case here, to spray the branches, because that's what you need to protect. It's not the flower, it's not the leaf of the tree, it's the branches. All the branches are what need to be coated with it. So you can avoid the leaves as best you can. CGWS, a white powder, look it up on our website, vasiliesgarden.com. Go to your local garden centers and ask for it so you can get it onto your tree. For citrus gall wasp, the branch. But if you also suffer with the new growth getting infected by citrus leaf biner, well, then you need to spray the leaves as well. Only problem again, folks, is we're gonna wait for it to finish flowering. Vasilisgarden.com. You can click and collect from Lethbridge and Dandenong North. You can pick up our planting mix, go to our stockers page for the planting mix at four or five different locations. All available to you at discounted prices. From me, Vasily, Maresi.